Set your alarm clocks because early tomorrow morning we are getting not just a total lunar eclipse, but a blood moon eclipse. The moon will appear blood red when Earth blocks most of the light shining on its surface. Most of the Western Hemisphere will have the best view and it all starts around 1255 Eastern as in right after midnight and is expected to last more than three and a half hours. Now NASA is sharing the best ways to catch the eclipse and what it reveals about our closest cosmic neighbor. NASA Artemis 3 and LRO project scientist Noah Petro is here to tell us all about that. Noah, thanks for coming on. I know it's not often that the Earth is positioned precisely between the moon and the sun. So how rare is this and why does it turn the moon red? Yeah, a couple great questions. So the rarity is because we have to have that perfect alignment. So we may have partial eclipses two or three times a year, but we really don't get total eclipses, but for a few times every few years. We won't have another eclipse like this one where the entire breadth of the country, in fact, North and South America will be able to see this until 2048. So tomorrow morning, tonight's eclipse will be very special. Now, why it turns that beautiful blood red color? Well, tonight you go out before sunset, you watch the sunset and the sky turns red. Well, that same process is why we see a red moon because during an eclipse, the shadow of the earth falls across the surface of the moon and the red hue of every sunrise and every sunset on the planet is projected onto the lunar surface. And so when you see the total eclipse tomorrow morning or late tonight, when you uh, see the moon turn that red color, you can thank Earth's magnificent atmosphere uh, for causing that red color. Now, NASA happens to have a few missions on and around the moon right now. So what are you hoping to learn mm -hmm from those images and the data they collect and how the eclipse impacts them. Absolutely. So, you know, lunar eclipses are special events, but for spacecraft in orbit around the moon, such as our Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter or the Blue Ghost Mission 1 that's on the surface of the moon, eclipses are quite challenging. You lose the sun, the source of your power. So for the LRO spacecraft, we're actually going to be turning off our instruments to preserve battery power. For, for cell phone users, it's like putting yourself on low power mode so that we don't uh, degrade the battery. For Blue Ghost Mission 1, they have an opportunity to actually take a picture of the Earth during the eclipse. So when you are looking at the moon during the eclipse, know that there's a spacecraft on the surface looking back at us. Now, previously, LRO has made measurements of the cooling of the surface of the moon during an eclipse. When the moon goes into the Earth's shadow, the sun disappears and the moon cools down. We've actually been able in the past to measure how quickly the surface cools, telling us something about the properties of the surface. So it's not just a beautiful event, but there are things to learn about our nearest neighbor in space. And you're working on NASA's Artemis 3 mission right now. It's mm -hmm. the first human mission to the lunar south pole. What are you most excited for in this new era of lunar exploration? Oh, I I'm excited for the mysteries yet to be discovered on the lunar surface. We know from the Apollo samples that we collected over 50 years ago that we have an un incomplete understanding of the history of the moon. We use that history of the moon to tell the history of the Earth as well, because the early history of the Earth is largely erased. That history is preserved on the surface of the moon. So when we go explore the moon and when we go to the South Pole with Artemis III, we're hoping to collect samples that will help us tell the story of the earliest few hundreds of millions of years of the Earth-Moon system, a story that's largely gone on the Earth, but very well preserved on the moon. I'm also excited for the journey that we're all taking together for this. Artemis is not just about the two crew members that are going to be going to the surface, the two crew members that will be staying in orbit. It's about our shared history and shared exploration of the moon. NASA scientist Noah Petro, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much.